Hello and welcome to Coffee with Carrie. Mm. Gracias. Glad you could be here today. I decided to wear green today because we're talking about the green monster. Jealousy, the green monster. And a coaching client had a conversation with me this week and this conversation was about their new partner spending time with his ex-wife and she was jealous about this and I think you know how I feel about it. I did an episode about it. I will link to it here. Not everybody agrees with me but based on my personal experiences and things I've coached clients through, the benefits of your partner having a great relationship with their ex and the, what that means for your relationship is really some really great stuff. So if you agree, I encourage you to watch that episode. And today I wanted to talk about some things that you can do when you see jealousy raising, rearing its ugly head and how you can stop yourself or things to think about. Let's talk about this a little bit, the green monster, and uh, we'll get to that right now. Number one, I suggest that you examine and take notes, take note of what is making you feel this way. Watch for patterns. See if this is a situation you've been in before that you know this is a trigger and this is what happens when this happens that I start to feel a little, what is jealousy? Insecurity. So I start to feel that way whenever I get myself in this situation or my partner does this, that, and the other. And I think kind of tracking this and knowing what your triggers are down the road and when you do make an effort to deal with this and or have a talk to yourself or get some help or talk to your partner about this, which we'll get to, I think it'll be really good if you will have been paying attention to what's triggering you and when this seems to happen. Number two, I want to remind you that if your partner wanted to be with somebody else, most of the time, I'm talking about adults, this isn't a high school conversation, um, or very, very young people, but with grown adults, if your partner wanted to be with another person, unless you have them chained to your sofa or your bed, they are free to get up and leave and go be with somebody else. So your natural setting point, your default setting, should be to assume this person wants to be with me, otherwise they would leave. I'm not making them stay. I can't force anybody to be with me. So I'm probably allowing my mind or my imagination to get ahead of me or go towards things that are not probably healthy for me when it's probably nothing because if he wanted to be with her, he would be. Keep that in mind. Number three, and I'm going to get a little psychological here, which I am not qualified to do. I just know what works for me and friends, conversations I've had. I've raised children. I've had girlfriends with jealousy issues, and we'd have conversations, or we know somebody, and also clients. And what I would say is this. If your insecurity is getting the best of you, and you are doubting yourself and wondering, am I enough? is sometimes what this jealousy stems from, then you need to talk to somebody to figure out how to love yourself, how to be assured and know that you are enough. You are always enough because of who you are and you're a good person. If you're a crappy person, then maybe you got a lot of work to do. That doesn't mean you do not deserve love, it just means you are a work in progress. But we all deserve love and if we are being kind, and we are being thoughtful to somebody else and honoring our own thoughts, feelings, and emotions, then we are certainly enough. So if you're feeling you're not, this isn't a question of jealousy. This is a question of you getting right with yourself and figuring out how to love you. Therapy is a great tool for self-exploration with the help of a trained person who can give you tools to do that. And also it's a great place to talk about your attachment style. I'm not the person to talk about attachment styles. I've read about them, but I'm in no way an expert. I did make an episode, I'll link to it here, that introduces you to what the attachment styles are, but I don't go into depth on how to figure out which you are, which your partner is, how you got that way, what contributed to you having this attachment style. But you know who's really good at talking about that? Therapists, counselors. Recognizing that this jealousy has more to do with you than it does have to do with your partner 
is a really great gift to yourself. It's telling yourself something you probably needed to hear, and it's the first step in making change. And one of the ways you can start to make those changes are to talk to yourself and give yourself affirmations. I am fun. I am pretty. I am adventurous. I am a awesome person to be around because I'm so thoughtful. I'm a great partner. And if you keep not just reminding yourself in here, but actually saying these things out loud has a benefit somehow this energy in the universe we start to believe these things if we hear these words out loud to ourselves. so if you realize that you're questioning whether you're worthy whether you're lovable whether you're enough i encourage you in the meantime before you get to therapy to start talking to yourself out loud and reminding yourself of all your wonderful qualities and why you do deserve somebody who's going to treat you well, respect you, and love you for who you are. Now, I should mention here, this person could be a total schmo and cheating on you, right? Sometimes we have to really just trust our gut and know that what we know is what we know. And you're going to have to figure out how to have a conversation about that and confront this person. But I'm talking more today about the fact that jealousy sometimes rears its ugly head because of our own shortcomings in feeling self, our self-esteem and feeling ourselves, having that self-confidence. So that's sort of what I'm talking about today. If your gut is yelling at you, then you need to figure that out. And it's probably not looking through his phone. It's probably talking to a counselor again and getting some advice on how to approach this with a partner. And I think some of this, maybe you could determine whether it's you or whether this person by asking whether or not this is your pattern. Are you typically somebody who gets jealous once things get to a certain point and now we're not out having all the fun, we're home more often and just hanging out, or now we're at a place in the relationship where maybe we're starting to take each other for granted. Maybe the answer to this question is to stop doing that and actually have more fun. But is it this person and what they're doing that are triggering you to feel jealousy or is it coming from within you? This is a really important question you have to ask yourself. And then finally, I wanted to say that if you realize this is you, this is a pattern you have, this person is prioritizing you, it's not your gut yelling at you, it's an internal struggle you're having, I feel that a partner would want to know this and know how they can help you get through this. So my suggestion is you be honest with your partner, not while you're sitting and watching a movie or at a family function or mini golfing, but when you're hanging out, having quiet time and having a conversation, you can let this person know that you have this issue where sometimes when things get to this point, you start feeling a little insecure and that it would be really great if they could step up in this situation and do something for you, and you may know what it is for you, right? What your love language is, perhaps. If it's love language is touch, you know what? Can you hold my hand more often? Because that might make me feel a little bit more secure. Or if you notice that I put some extra effort into looking pretty for our date on Saturday nights, could you be a person who gives me words of affirmation and lets me know that you notice I put some effort in, maybe even tell me I look pretty. If you're thinking it, I need to hear it. A, a partner who loves you is always going to be willing to give you what you need if you can be clear about what you need. They're going to step up. They're going to want to do those things for you if they love you. And if they don't want to, maybe your jealousy is well-founded, but you'll figure it out. And knowing is always better than not knowing. I hope you found this helpful and interesting and or both. And if you did, please give the episode a thumbs up. You can hit that uh, subscribe button because it's free. And then you can come back and we can hang out again. More to talk about, I'm sure. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if your thoughts on this conversation and if there's anything else that you had questions about or wanted to talk about. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, thank you and have a good one.